All right, this video is about trig models and looking specifically at cosine problems. Okay, what this really means is how to find the equation from a graph. Okay, working a little bit backwards. Okay, so the first thing you have to do, you'll be given these graphs that um, go up and down and up and down. You don't know if it's sine or cosine, but it, they'll tell you which one you need to find, whether it's a sine or a cosine graph. So you have to remember, remember the basic parent function, the shape of that. Remember cosine does this, right? It starts up at one and it ends up at one. So it ends at two peaks. It begins and ends at two peaks. So when you approach a graph and you need to find a cosine, you're going to do just that. Find two peaks. And preferably, you want to stick over here on the right side of your graph if you can. So I'm going to find two peaks. Um, let's see, like right here to right here. And I would darken that in so I'm really clear on which section I'm working with as I work through the values, and we'll see, you'll see what I mean in a minute. But darken that section in. You could have picked this peak over here to this peak over here. It doesn't matter. Or even the one around the origin. It won't matter. But you want to pick one full period and darken it. Okay? So that's the shape of cosine, remember? And what if it says darken a period of the graph that's reflected for cosine? Well, if it's reflected, then we know it's doing this shape. Trough to trough is what we would say. Bottom to bottom. So again, you're going to pick a bottom to a bottom and go all the way through that whole period and darken just that little period, okay? Remember the shape of cosine, all right? So that's the basic idea. As you look at a graph, you need to isolate one section that's one full period and focus on that one section. All right, so here's the rules. Now, I know this is a lot on one slide, so pause it, write it down. It'll make sense when you work a problem, so you need to have this to refer to. So here's the basic equation for cosine. A cosine bx minus c plus d. All right. Now, to find the a value, what do you do? You take the highest y value on the graph and subtract the lowest y value. Remember, it's subtract there. Then you multiply it by 1 half. That will give you your value for a. To find b, well, b relates to period. You know this, 2 pi divided by b. Period is the time it takes to complete one cycle. So you look on the graph and find, okay, how long did it take to complete one cycle? Set that equal to 2 pi over b, solve it for b. And then I'll show you here in a minute. Cosine, or define c. Okay, that's this section of the equation. Okay, bx minus c. So you have the b value because you've already calculated it. The x value is the place where your little segment of the graph begins, where, whatever that x value is on the graph. That's what you use for x there. And then you plug it all in and you solve it for C. Again, it will make sense when we work a problem. To find D, you take the maximum Y point, add it to the maximum min, or to the min point, minimum point, then divide by 2. So write the equation, you plug in the calculated values, and remember that C is going to go in with the opposite sign. Remember the equation is a minus C? So whatever you calculate for C, you subtract the sign when you put it in the equation. All right, that's the general rules and mechanics. Let's try one. All right, so here's your example. Use the graph to find the equation. It's cosine, so I need to pick a one period, peak to peak. So I'm going to first thing I'm going to do is darken that section I'm going to work in. Just work on this little section here, okay? Darken that section alone, and I'm going to find my different values. I spread them out here. Okay, so find A. It says one half the maximum y value minus the minimum y value. So a would be 1 half. What's the maximum y value? Well, it's 3 minus the minimum value. Well, that's negative 3. So minus a negative makes it plus 3. So it's 1 half of 6, which means A is 3. So I know A is 3 in my equation. All right? To find B, period, remember, period is the time it takes to complete the cycle. So I have to take 2 pi over B, set it equal to how, what's the space between these? Okay, so look. It goes from 1.5 to 0.5. Well, what's that period? That whole section is 1, isn't it? So how do I know that? 1.5 minus 0.5 gives me a 1. So I can set this equal to 1. Solve it for B. by You can cross multiply. So B equals 2 pi, right? Now, right, remember, we said a was 3, b was 2 pi. Okay, we'll need that. Now we're going to do c. 
Remember our segment? I'm going to just darken it in one more time. All right. Now, to find C, you're going to plug in the X value where your segment begins. Well, what is that X value? Well, that X value is 0.5, okay, or 1 half. Then you're going to plug it into this value right here. So B, we said, was 2 pi times X minus C equals 0, right? So when I multiply this, I get pi minus C equals 0. Add C to both sides, that means pi is C. All right, or C is pi. Okay, there's that. Now to find D, D is the maximum value plus the minimum value. So the maximum value was a positive three, plus the minimum value, well that was negative three. Well, that's just one half times zero, and zero, so D is zero. All right, so remember the equation. It says Y equals A cosine bx minus c plus d. Now I'm going to plug in the values. So my equation would be, what do we say? a was 3 cosine bx minus c. Okay, well c was pi, so I'm going to subtract pi. You can put plus 0 if you want, but you don't have to. Okay, you don't have to do that. But I'm showing you, that's the way your equation would work. All right, that's the basic steps. You've got to calculate A, B, C, and D, and that will give you your values for your equation, and that should be enough to get your equation correct.